Travel Tidbits podcast, hosted by the agents of Pineapple Escapes. Join us as we discuss the latest in travel news, destinations, and tips for the savvy traveler. After all, travel makes life sweeter. Hello, and welcome to Episode 7 of the Travel Tidbits podcast. I'm Jamie Weidel, travel agent and owner of Pineapple Escapes. This week, we have a special episode of our podcast as we want to ring in the new year with talk of travel in 2021 and all that we have to look forward to in the year ahead. We hope that your 2021 has started off well and that you're busy planning for all of the wonderful travel that 2021 will hold for yourself and your family. At least that's what we're keeping our fingers crossed for anyway. I have both Sharon and Nikki here with me today to dive into our own travel wish list for 2021. And thanks to both of you guys for being here today. Yeah, excited to be here. Yeah, definitely. So let's jump right in um, into our slice of life. First of all, before we talk about 2021, we've got to talk about 2020 and how COVID basically screwed up our entire lives, especially with travel. And as travel agents, I think, I mean, obviously, all different fields were hit by COVID, but travel agents were definitely hit and all aspects of the travel industry were hit by COVID. And so I think all of us are hoping that a vaccine, as we've seen, the vaccine is being distributed. It's it's a slow process, but it, it's out there and it's starting. And so I think a lot of us are having a lot of hope that the vaccine will bring kind of this herd immunity by the end of the year. Guys, what's your take on the vaccine, on moving into 2021 after COVID and your thoughts. Nikki, let's start with you. So for me, it's, it's a little different because my husband works in the medical field. And so today he um, is at the hospital here in South Florida and they just started doing the round of vaccines this week. And he actually got his yesterday. And, it's, and it is, it's a, it's a personal choice. Even for him, there was a ton of research that he did about it. And you know I haven't got mine yet. And it's just, I don't know where I see this going as far as travel. There's been rumors of that, um, you know, you'll have to have like the quote unquote stamp of approval saying, yes, I got my vaccine. I can go somewhere or, you know, looking at um, on your passport, there's, you know, been rumors of maybe they'll add a section in there, you know, for future passports that are purchased saying, yes, I'm vaccine safe or whatever that looks like. So do I hope that it increases and, you know, things change for the better? Absolutely. We are definitely going to hope that. But in 2020 fashion, like, you just don't know. We have no idea where this is headed. We hope that it's for the better. And I'm, like you said, going to keep our fingers crossed that it's headed in the right direction. But it, it's the unknown. And it's just everyone's personal choice about this. And I think that's something that we all just need to be sensitive about and just respect people's wishes and how we handle all this moving forward. That's really exciting that your husband started his vaccine rounds and is yeah. moving forward with that. I hope yeah. that that ends up being a positive. Um, that's one thing my husband and I were actually talking about this morning was You know, he's an essential employee too, um, working for the government, and he will probably get his vaccine before I do. And then we have young children, and what's the age limit? When will they be able to get theirs? And if it's required for travel, how will that impact our travel? Right. So there's definitely a lot of questions out there about how this is all going to play out and how it will relate to travel. Yeah. What they're looking at right now here in South Florida is that they're doing all the essential workers in the hospital. And then from there, it just kind of comes by priority of who needs it. And like you said, we aren't sure on like age limit of like children and stuff like that. So it's just, we're all headed into the unknown, but hopefully it's, it's a positive unknown. Sharon, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, so I agree here in North Carolina, they have started giving it like at hospitals, the governor has sort of laid out a plan, um, who gets it first and the, I guess the pecking order, you know, of how things will go. Robert and I currently, you know, for us are unsure, but, uh, well, but like you, Nikki, we're doing research. Uh, We've been looking over at other countries and sort of monitoring them and seeing the research they're doing as well as the research that's given here. And I mean, right now we're on the fence, but I would expect that for us. I mean, it took us a little while to say yes to a vaccination that um, we just had Eli have. And so, like you said, I think it's just mainly research, Mm -hmm. getting everybody to your own comfort level. And no matter what that is, 
there's still travel available for everyone, whether or not you're comfortable with the vaccination or not. There's still ways for you to travel. And just knowing that, knowing, you know, what the regulations are, and those are things that we can help with. That's right. that's why we're reading a thousand articles, it feels like a day, <laughs> not only just what all the protocols are in different countries and here in the United States and different states, but okay, now we're putting in this vaccination and with all of that, how does all of this play together? Yeah. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see how it does all play out through 2021. And I hope that, you know, when we do our new year's episode next year, that we can start it on a much brighter note than we're starting it today. But for us in the travel industry, the vaccine does bring hope. It brings hope that other countries are going to start reopening to Americans, that we're going to have more options for travel, that there's going to be different protocols that obviously we will keep up with, but hope that things are going to be more free and more open in the future, hopefully later in 2021. So obviously, we've all had impacts from COVID this year. But I think the idea of kind of planning for 2021 and having a wish list for what we hope to have happen in 2021 is important. So one of my big things from 2020 was um, my family was scheduled to go to Machu Picchu over spring break. I canceled that. Obviously, that was when, you know, the first wave hit and the first lockdowns. And we rescheduled then for Thanksgiving. Um, I then canceled that. So now we are looking at maybe June of 2021 is where we're kind of looking at now. But it's still kind of one of those things where it's planned in pencil. It's not for sure at this point because we really don't know how things are going to go. But we are hopeful that in 2021, we will get to Machu Picchu and get to take that trip. Sharon, what trips did you have planned for 2020 that were delayed or postponed? And how has that impacted your wish list for 2021? Yeah. So, I mean, we had several trips that um, was canceled, maybe even postponed. We were supposed to go to Walt Disney World in April as a family. That got canceled pretty much almost right away. Uh, New York City. We had a Chicago. We were going out. Um, all the travel agents in Pineapple Escapes were going out to Chicago for a training. We were looking forward to that. And all you can eat Mexican food, which is a story <laughs> all in a, of itself. But then on top of that, like right before COVID started, I had started planning an all inclusive trip, at least for Robert and I. And when COVID hit, I mean, that just sort of it fizzled out. I just stopped planning immediately. So it has definitely all those trips that were canceled now have pretty much doubled up into 2021. And my list is becoming quite long. I think Robert's getting ready to cut me off somewhere <laughs> because he just keeps rolling his eyes at me. I think Mike feels the same way when I shared my list of wish list ideas for 2021 with him. He just kind of looked at me like I have four heads, but <laughs> eh, that's what it's like living with a travel agent. So Nikki, what about you? Um, no. What trips did you have in 2020 that were delayed or postponed? And how has that impacted your wish list? Yeah. So, you know, I, um, it's been interesting because so Nick and I are on this thing where just about every other year, we are doing a big abroad trip. And we, in a sense, lucked out that we didn't have that plan for 2020. That was our off year. We weren't doing abroad trips. Um, but we had about five different weddings that we were supposed to go to. And being that we live in South Florida and we're from the Midwest, we were flying to a lot of these different weddings. And so here I am, I'm, I'm bummed that it didn't happen because we didn't get a go. But obviously my heart goes out to all of those brides because some of them not only had to postpone it, but they postponed it twice. It would be like, all right, we're not doing it here. We're going to do it this day. And then we push it again. So we had a bunch of like littler trips because a lot of times when we do these weddings, we try to extend it, especially if it's in a cool city. We'll go for the wedding and we'll either stay a little bit before or we'll stay a little bit after and do many vacations that way. But our larger trips, yeah, we're looking at more for 2021. Another thing that we missed out on was my sister-in-law's graduation from college. Um, that was another thing that was supposed to happen in May. And then they continued pushing it. And they're like, you know what? Sorry, we, we can't, even, can't even do it. So she never even got to do the official walk across the stage, which was, um, I know, hard for a lot of people that were in the same boat as she was. But so large trips, not too bad for us last year. Just a bunch of little ones that we missed out on. 
Yeah. And I, I think that that was definitely another part of COVID, like all the weddings, e- not even just destination weddings, but just weddings in general, graduations, and how it's impacted, you know, kids too with high school graduations. I mean, your senior year, you have so much to look forward to with prom and, you know, a senior trip and all of those things. And they just didn't happen. So I think we are going to see that idea of revenge travel that Nikki and I talked a little yes. bit about last week. But I also think that a lot of us have a lot of really long wish lists and bucket lists for our 2021 travel. So that's our at the core this week. We're going to really talk about what our wish lists are for 2021 and what we want to see happen in 2021 for travel for ourselves. So Sharon, let's start with you. What is your wish list, bucket list of travel for 2021 that you're hoping will happen? Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's fairly long in, you know, the stance <laughs> of our standard year, uh, but I am so excited about our plan. So, I sort of go in order. In April, we're supposed to be going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Uh, my larger family, Jamie and her family will be going. And then Christy, another one of the travel pineapple escapes travel agents and her husband uh, will be going. I believe there'll be 17 of us. So we'll be sailing to Aruba, Bonaire, uh, Curacao, St. Martin. Of course, we'll be spending some time on the front end in San Juan. And I'm just I really am so excited. I that is the trip I'm a little nervous about. So it's definitely planned in pencil. And I'm already starting to come up with plan B just in case. And then I'll go to June. And then we're going to have a pineapple escapes training in Cancun. And this is one that I've been asking for, for (laughs) I don't know, I think from the start. So I'm super excited about that. I can't wait to go my family probably will not be joining us on the back end of that trip because we will soon be turning around and we'll be doing or be taking an Oregon Trail road trip. It is inspired from the old the Oregon Trail computer game. So if you are <laughs> geeked out, that is what it is. Yes. So uh, we'll be the plan is we'll be starting in Independence, Missouri, ending in Portland, Oregon. Right now, the trip's looking like 12 days, but I'm hoping to add a couple of days because we want to spend some extra time um, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It's gorgeous there. We've never been. It's on our list, and I want to make sure that we have plenty of time there. So I'm super excited about that. Robert's even more excited about it. He's totally geeking out over this trip, um, and it just makes me smile every time we talk about it. Then just a few other trips on the radar. I want to do a couple mom and me trips or mom and me getaways with the boys. Just a great way to spend some one-on-one time with them. I'm looking at Walt Disney World for Rayleigh so he can get his dull whip that he asked <laughs> um, for the other month. And then a Clearwater Beach for Eli. I'm looking to take the boys somewhere that they would choose so that they can help plan the trip. And then Robert and I will probably have another weekend getaway those tend to be last minute trips so you know who knows where the wind will blow us and then we may take a thanksgiving vacation robert and i just started talking about it it's not official yet Um, i'm definitely leaning towards universal orlando resort though if we do that i know my guys will love uro you O-R, said that wrong. Um, and I can't wait for them to try a frozen butter beer. So yeah, that may be on the list too. That sounds like a great rundown and lots of fun stuff to do and enjoy and lots to look forward to. So yes. I, I'm with you. I'm also kind of nervous about our Royal Caribbean cruise in April. I'm not really sure what cruises are going to look like at that point, but I'm hopeful and I'm yes. I'm paid in full. So Whatever it will be, it will be. And if I have to transfer it to another cruise, I guess we'll just have to plan another one. So, oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe, I mean, maybe it, you can go on this one, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. If, if yeah. we get the timing right, maybe yeah, we can I'm not, I'm snag not a few extras. Yeah. To go on this April one. So, part of me won't be too bummed if y'all have to reschedule it for another time because then I may hop on that one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're all in, all in, anytime, anytime. Yeah. So, Nikki, tell me about your 2021 travel plans and your wish list. So I am planning to 
fingers crossed major on this one, get out of the country. Um, this is, <laughs> this would be, a, yeah, this would be our year that we would be going abroad. And I don't know if this was the smartest thing. At the time, it seemed very smart. Back in May, whenever the U.S. was like officially banned from traveling to Europe, ticket prices plummeted. And so Nick and I were in a matter of 24 hours of that ban coming out, bought tickets to London. So we were like, we have no idea how long this ban is going to last, but surely it's going to have to come up eventually. So we're scheduled to go to London and return to Paris for a second time um, for this coming spring. But the most fun about this trip is that we surprised my mom and invited her to come with us on this trip. She's never been abroad. And I warned her ahead of time when I was giving her the surprise. I said, I promise you we're not pregnant, but I want to give you the surprise. And because that's just, that's what everyone thinks at this moment when I say I have a surprise. And so I just have to preface that first <laughs> so they're not disappointed. <laughs> but So I was giving her this gift and she just immediately cried. She couldn't believe it because I had it set up to where she looked at it, she opened it and she was like, London, oh my gosh, can't believe it's so excited. And I was like, oh wait, mom, there's more like, look at the next page. And she was like, Paris. And just lost it. And she was so excited. So I really such I'm so thankful for my husband for agreeing to bring his mother in law um, on this trip with us because I know that it's a trip that she will never forget. So that's the first one. And then our second one is a major bucket list item for Nick and I and that is to travel to Australia and we are planning that right now. Wow. Um, yeah, for October of 2021. So that one, we haven't officially bought anything for it yet. We're still obviously watching and still monitoring. But that one, um, I so hope we can do that one. And I'm just, I've already, being the travel agent that I am, um, actually, even before I was a travel agent, we had decided on this trip back in June. And I didn't start being a travel agent until July. And he decided on this. And I think within 24 hours, I had our, our route mapped out. We didn't buy flights, but I'm like, we're going to start here. <laughs> and then we're going to go there. And then we're going to go here. And I was like, and we need to go in October because that's the better weather. And I, you know, had looked all that stuff up. So those are our two major trips that, again, are still planned in pencil. We're still dreaming about, still hoping they can happen. And then in between all that, with us living in South Florida, I'm sure we'll pop up to Disney, we'll pop up to Universal. Um, you know, we have our awesome agent training trips that I'm looking forward to this year. And then I have all the weddings that were supposed to be last year are now pushed to this year. So quite a few little trips planned in the midst of all of that. So looking forward to it. Jamie, what do you got? Well, first, I got to comment on your Australia trip. So that's been on my list forever. Yeah. Um, actually, in April of 2019, I found flights, but I had booked Hawaii two days before. And so we ended up going to Hawaii instead. Was this, but, wait, was this in November that you had found these flights? Or like, was that no, for November? No, they were, they were April flights. They were spring. But we had found flights one year. It was, I think, also in 2019. It was like $500 round yes. trip to Australia. And Nick and I were like, we got to do it. And then we started thinking about, okay, the amount of time I have to take off work and kind of, you know, balancing yes. numbers out that way. We're like, all right, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. So we, we were <laughs> able to do it. But that's if fine. I wouldn't have booked Hawaii two days before we would, we would have been, but that's been on my list forever. One of our, actually one of our good friends, her husband is from Australia. Oh, and wow. so they, her kids have Australian passports and U.S. passports, dual citizenship. And so they went back, I think it was two years ago now, and I helped some with their trip, but obviously he has all the intel. So right. if you want to be hooked up with a true Australian, I've got a connection. I for will you, need so. that connection for you. From <laughs> <laughs> That sounds good. So for me, for 2021, Mike likes to joke that I'm on the six-week plan. I can only handle being home for about six weeks before... I basically lose it and I have to go somewhere. So, yeah, but it's true. I mean, come on, let's a, <laughs> let's admit that that is a true I statement. Think it's probably easier to ask you, Jamie, what days are you going to be home for yeah. <laughs> going on vacation? Hey, you know, somebody's got to do this research. Right. I mean, let's be that's, honest. Yeah, that's true. But <laughs> so, in my six week plan, I kind of have a trip about every other month planned, with some months a little extra heavy, but. So we're kind of thinking, so Mike and I do have Maui booked for February. Um, it'll be our 17th wedding anniversary. I also need to go for work. Um, there's a seller of travel that I need to get in Hawaii, and I have to actually go to a bank in Hawaii to get it. So, oh my gosh, darn it, I have to go to Hawaii. And Maui is where we honeymoon, so that seemed like a great choice. There are COVID requirements 
What, Nikki? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly what I was going to ask about was with you going to Hawaii here in February, what are your thoughts on like the current COVID uh, requirements that they're asking? I'm, I mean, I'm fine with taking the test before we go. I, I'm not really worried about it. As long as we test negative, we'll be fine. And you're not and you're island hopping, right? No, we're not, not this trip. Yeah. Um, that just seemed like too much for what we're not going to be there that long because the in-laws will be with the kids. And so we won't be gone super long. I think it's five nights or six nights. It's a pretty short trip overall for Hawaii. We usually go for 10 to 14 days when we take the kids, but they'll be in school. Well, at least virtual school. <laughs> so some kind of school. So it'll just be Mike and I. So we're not really worried about testing. We have to test 72 hours before we have to submit it. I'm obviously familiar with all of the guidelines. Right. So I, I mean, I think that won't be a big issue for us. So as long as we test negative. Yeah. But, yeah. Then it- I mean, God help us. But so that's our first big trip. And then I have the cruise with the Pineapple Escapes agents in April that Sharon already talked about. And then we're going to Cancun with the agents in June. And I'm hoping that my family will come down after we do our training part and maybe some of our families will get to hang out. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun. And then I also have a trip planned to Hilton Head Island, um, actually staying at the Disney property with my good friend Mandy. And then I've mentioned previously, but I used to be a high school teacher. Well, now all of my yearbook girls, I was the advisor for the yearbook and all of my yearbook girls are in their early 30s. And I kind of want to do like a reunion. So we have several of our former yearbook girls who are going to fly down and meet us. Mandy and I taught together. So that should be a fun trip and a good way to catch up with those girls as long as, you know, COVID's a thing of the past by then. But they're awful special girls. Two of them actually are. Christie's kids. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. But, <laughs> welcome to my life. <laughs> but the other big trip for this year is for my 40th in late July, we are planning an Alaskan cruise. And obviously, these are <sighs> kind of on the line, too. So, we will see if this actually happens or not. That's, that's like my major dream, though. I've, before we moved to um, here in South Florida, I was constantly asking Nick, can we do an Alaskan cruise? And when, when we had lived in the Midwest, he said, absolutely not. If I'm going on vacation, I not want it to <laughs> I want be colder to be warm. than where I'm already at. Yeah. Now that we live in South Florida, he's like, all right, maybe we can do that. So I'm, I'm really pushing for that too once, once cruises are up and running. Yeah, when Jamie threw that one out, it was tempting to book for us, but we had just decided sort of do the Oregon Trail and it's like, oh, I don't think we can do both. So yeah, that's, I can't wait to see the pictures and everything from that. So I actually did an Alaskan cruise when I was pregnant with Bo. We went with all of Mike's extended family and did a big cruise. So I've done it before, but my kids haven't done it. So I guess I'm looking forward to it, seeing it through their eyes more than anything, but that's part. I really wanted to do it this last year. It was one of my ones that was like, I never got booked, which ended up being a good thing. But so we kind of rescheduled for this next year. So that's kind of my current 40th birthday plan. We'll see if that happens or if I end up going a totally different <laughs> direction with that. But it is booked, not paid in full yet, though. So we'll see what happens there. The other big trip, I mean, Machu Picchu, we have to get rescheduled sometime in 2021. And then a week and a half before COVID hit, I had promised Bo that we would go to Disneyland, just the two of us. We had it booked. We had it planned. And then like Disneyland shut down like three days before we were supposed to go. Like it was, it could not have been worse timing. And obviously Disneyland is still not reopened. So we are hoping that Disneyland will reopen sometime in 2021. And Bo and I will be the first in line to be there because we have been waiting and waiting for it to reopen to get our mom and son trip in. So that's, hopefully that's that a will cool happen. thing that you do. Do you already have kind of a mindset of what you'll do with your girls or like, is this the first time you're doing kind of mom and kid trip or what's that look like for you? Well, I took all three of them by myself, but I haven't done individual trips. And part of that is it just, it always seems to make sense to just take all of them. Yeah. And But I know that that time with just them one-on-one is going to be so special and important as they look back on their memories. And some of the things that they remember from our trips just (laughs) 
blow my mind, but it's never what I think they're going to remember. Yeah. I think that's one of the funniest things. Like when we get together with like Nick's family and stuff, so he has two other siblings. And every time, I don't care what's the point of us all getting together, some way, somehow family vacation memories get brought up. And it's always like the three siblings talking about what they remember versus again, like what the parents remember. So it's, it's interesting to get that perspective and just again, shows just how important, even if it's a small weekend trip, just how important family vacations are. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And the stuff that my trio remembers, (laughs) just (laughs) if you could see me rolling my eyes right now, (laughs) like it's, it's never what I think they're going to remember. So those are that's basically a, a quick breakdown of what I have planned. I mean, we will end up at Walt Disney World, we'll end up at Universal. I end up there every year. So that will happen yeah. too. So one, one thing I just kinda wanna mention here too, like we're not this is you know, us here, for those of you that are listening, we're not just here just bragging about what we're doing. That's, that's not <laughs> this at all. A few a few like reasons for this. One is to hopefully give you ideas of things that we're thinking about, but also too just to kind of show you that, you know, we're doing this traveling. Yes, obviously it's fun for us. But it's honestly to gain this knowledge and to be able to share it back with you, with our clients and be like, hey, I've been there. I've done that. This is that firsthand experience that, you know, you can rely on as travel agents. You know, sometimes, yeah, there's good deals for us specifically, but a lot of times we're still paying for this out of our pocket, just like you would. So this is it's not something, again, as like a brag of look at what we're doing, but more or less, wow, look at what you're doing, you know, for me as a client. That should be hopefully the the take you you take from all of this today. (laughs) Well, and a lot of times some of my trips end up, I end up booking because a client books and I'm like, well, I have to go see it before I send them or yes. I'm not going to feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. So I, I think a lot of it is, and, and a lot of my travel over the last six, seven years has been because of that. I mean, I travel because I want these experiences because I want to be able to make it the best for my clients. Obviously I do it for my kids too, and I want them to have the experiences, but Until I've done it firsthand, I really find I can't sell things. And so I I have to have done it and be able to answer all of their questions and and know it to be able to effectively. We did our our Disney, our training trip last week. Like I've looked at a Disney resort map. I can tell you where they're all laid out. You know, I can look at, you know, the art of animation specifically and be like, all right, this is the layout of it. But until you're specifically here, until you specifically see, oh, wow, those little mermaid rooms are pretty far back there on that, you know, resort layout. Um, it's just different. So I can then tell my clients who have, you know, grandma and grandpa coming, hey, FYI, you know, the little mermaid ones, they're pretty far back there. This is what that vision looks like. This is how long it's going to take you to walk there. And I'm, I'm much more comfortable knowing that because I've been there and I've seen it. And like you said, I can just explain that and, you know, sell that more to them to make sure they have just the best trip possible. Yeah, and yeah. you know, on top of that, I mean, you know, like what you said, Nikki, we're not here to brag. This is definitely not what that is about, but sort of something you said when you first came on, and this sort of, I guess, has just become our theme for ourselves. It's planning in pencil. Like we literally have taken our calendars and where we would maybe be writing in pen. Now we're writing in pencil yep. because. Where, yes, I have a cruise planned for April, that cruise may not happen. And so it's spring break for us. We want to do something during that, no matter whether it's just going to Myrtle Beach or whether we're taking that cruise. And therefore, it's in pencil and we're already coming up with plan B, plan C. What are some of the other options that we would like to do? And not just that, but COVID has changed our lives. And so now we're... You know, we may be like, okay, we want to take a summer trip, you know, where we now we're doing a two week week trip and, you know, on the Oregon Trail, we may would have done a week like in London or Paris and took the boys for that. Now we're going, okay, well, hold on. Let's think differently. You know, how can we travel differently? And COVID has had all of us. I guess we've had a mind shift. And so that's why next year. I think we're finding ourselves traveling so much because we're needing to cover all the basis. When we have a family who's comfortable going out overseas, we need to experience that. When we have a, you know, a family who's not comfortable flying yet, okay, well, what road trip would be great for you all? We need to cover the basis of what what our clients are expecting. 
And, and I think too, that some of it is, you know, here's my plan. Here's my best laid plan. If three of these don't end up being a go, well, here's my next, pl- like, that's kind of mine's, it's a wish list. It's yes. yeah, most likely all of this is not going to happen, but this is my hope. Like, <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, dream that it's motivating. It's amazing how many people are like, I just need something to look forward to. You know, let's put a vacation on the calendar. It can like, motivate me to push through until I get to that day. And so if you only have a plan A, and if that falls through, then you're some kind of bummed when that date comes around and you're not going anywhere. So yeah, definitely, definitely planning in pencil. And that also just goes beyond and meaning, you know, travel insurance, refundable, you know, vendors and stuff like that. So we're not losing money on our plans A, B, and C. Right. And and I think that that's one thing that we're good at is I yes. can't tell you how many trips I book for myself and then end up rescheduling or canceling or changing. And, and I'm very good at it. So So I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, that we sort of all pick on Jamie. Like, how many trips do you have on the books for yourself right at this second? Like, how, yeah. how many and how many overlap dates to? <laughs> I, I you would should never. see the face. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. <laughs> okay, so let's move into our crushed it segment, our travel favorite of the week. This week, we are talking about our travel humidifier. I'm the one that has this. Do you guys have one of these yet? I know. No. I, was su- I was super intrigued by the TikTok that you made about this because I'd never <laughs> seen something like that. Yeah. So we travel. So in normal times, we travel for swim. My, my trio are all swimmers. So we are typically during the winter season staying at hotels throughout the winter for swim meets. And it's gross here in the Midwest in the winter and it's dry and you know hotel rooms are just notoriously dry yeah so I found this cute little travel humidifier on Amazon and it just uses a bottle of water so you can use your bottle of water and you just turn it upside down and turn it on and it is amazing so I haven't got to use it for a swim meet yet this year but I did use it on our Colorado trip and it was amazing. Totally worth it. Now, Nikki, you probably don't need this in South Florida. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the humidity level is probably great there, yeah. but <laughs> year round in the summer, it does get humid here, but it's not an issue for I us in the winter. I, mean, I Like I said, I grew, I grew up Illinois, Indiana area. And it was when you'd stay in hotels or just in general, like I carried chapstick and lotion with me consistently throughout the winter season. Um, So that is, that's a really cool, that's a cool uh, travel tip you got there. Yeah. And I I love it. So I give this one four and a half pineapple rings. And why is it a half, not a full five? What? Well, I hate that I have to refill the bottle. (laughs) I'm just lazy. (laughs) It's what it is. Like how long does it last? Does one bottle last? um, Well, it depends on how high you turn it up. So in Colorado, I would get up during the middle of the night and fill it up because I had it cranked up. So the one bottle wasn't quite enough. So that's why it's four and a half. But it's easy to pack because you don't have to worry about the water bottle and it's small. So it's not like the one that you have at home, the big honking one where it has the whole water carriage thing on it. So so that's why it gets four and a half. So thanks for making me explain myself there, Nikki. (laughs) I'm lazy and don't want to get up in the middle of the night. It's all good. Not a perfect five. Like I need a reason for it. (laughs) So anyway, the link for this will be in our show notes. And this is not a sponsored thing. It's just something that we love. Thanks, Nikki and Sharon for joining us today. And thanks to everybody else for joining us as we discussed our travel wish lists for 2021. If you enjoyed this episode, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and leave a review. New episodes of the Travel Tidbits podcast go live each Monday, and we'd love to have you join our community. Thanks, guys. We hope you've enjoyed today's episode of the Travel Tidbits podcast hosted by Pineapple Escapes. Travel makes life sweeter. Let the experts help you plan a vacation with lasting memories. We'd love to help you plan your next vacation and have you join our community. You can find us on the web at www.pineappleescapes.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Pineapple Escapes.